Today I'll be discussing something about the core values of Buddhism. Before this, we were discussing about the origin of Buddhism, where it started, where it started, and what were the real principles of Buddhist philosophy. We also discussed all these things in my previous deliberations. But today, after speaking about how Buddhism is placed in different parts of the world, how Buddhism started in India and then came to different parts of the world, including China and Southeast Asia. Today, I'll be speaking something about what are the values of this religion that attracted so many people around the world. And today, one fourth of the total population of the world, they believe in this religion preached by Gautam Buddha. Buddhism is a rather philosophy of life that expounded by the historical Gautam Buddha. Buddha means the enlightened one. The person who got the enlightenment, he became a Buddha. Now this Buddha, Gautam after achieving the Buddhahood, Gautam achieving, after achieving the enlightenment, he was living in most part of India, born in Kapilvastu Lumbini, and taught in many places in northern India, starting from the Deer Park in Sarnath in the 6th century BC. And this Buddha was not a god, rather, he was a person who got the enlightenment or got the buddhi, bodhi. And the philosophy of Buddhism, the religion he preached was Buddhism. And the philosophy of Buddhism does not entail any theistic world. It, it believed non-theistic world view. The teachings of the Buddha are aimed solely at liberating the people from suffering. This philosophy of Buddhism was to give a way to the people to go away from suffering and get the ultimate Nibbana or ultimate um, escape from the life suffering. What are the basic teachings of Buddha? The basic teachings of Buddha, we can summarize the whole thing in just three, four ways. There are three universal truths. The first truth is nothing lost in this universe. The first one is nothing lost in the universe. The second one, everything changes. The third one, the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect, the effect is because of the cause. And everything is changing in this world, but nothing is lost in this universe. That means if somebody dies, then he comes to this world again in some other form. It depends on how he comes, because every time he is coming, he is coming to suffer here. And the ultimate end of any human being or anybody is to get rid of these sufferings. What are the four noble truths? Buddha preached four noble truths. Realize the four noble truths. What are the four noble truths? The truth of suffering, that is dukkha. Dukkha means suffering. The truth of origin of suffering, how the suffering starts, it is, it can be discussed under the heading of samudaya. Then the truth of suggestion of suffering. There should be some mechanism through which you can stop the suffering. This is known as nirodha. The truth of the path of suggestion of suffering, the way you have to follow, how you are getting rid of the suffering, how you are going away from dukkha, 
is known as Magga. So, the four noble truths, which in my last deliberations I told how Buddha realized all these things by seeing four different sins while going on a visit with his charioteer. Now, these are, you can say that we can say that it is Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirodha, and Magga. And there is a cause for this Dukkha. And if you want to go away from the co, you have to find the cause and you do everything so that that cause doesn't occur and you get liberated. So this is the four noble truths of Buddhism. Now for getting away from the sufferings, one has to follow the eightfold path. This is known as the noble eightfold path or you can say it as I saw, said it before, it was Arja Ostanga Marga. There are several paths, and it is represented by a wheel with eight spokes. This is right view. Take a right view on anything. Right intention. Whenever you are interacting with somebody, you should have a right intention. Right speech. You should speak in such a way which is right. Then right action. You do everything that you consider to be right. Right livelihood. You have to live here and to earn a livelihood, you earn it through right way, that is right livelihood. Right effort, you have to do the work with right efforts. Right concentration, you have to have a concentration of doing certain things. Then right mindfulness. These are the eightfold path which is the teaching of Buddha. You have to follow all these eight paths and follow it religiously so that you can get nirvana in the ultimate place. Then there are three practices. What are the practices? Every Buddhist lay follower, whether he is a household follower, or even for that monks who are renouncing the world and becoming the monks, coming to the Buddhist, Buddhist fold, they should practice the three things known as shila, samadhi, and pragya. What is sila? Sila is the virtue. The virtue, good conduct, morality. This is based on two fundamental principles. The principle of equality, that all living beings, all living entities are equal. The principle of reciprocity. You have to leave others in order to get the love. You have to love others in order to get the love. So the reciprocity should be there. It is a virtue, sila meaning the virtue, and your good conduct, how moral you are, how good you are conducting yourself. And this is based on the fundamental principles of equality. You have to treat everybody equal to you. Then comes samadhi. Samadhi meaning concentration, meditation, mental development, which is very necessary for mental development you should have concentration on the thing what you are doing. You should have a meditation. You have to develop one's mind is the path to wisdom. Through meditation and through concentration, you can go in this path of wisdom, which in turn leads to personal freedom of everything. You can free from all worries and anxieties, you can be free from all your dukkhas if you have concentration on a meditation for that time. And there will be mental development because the mental development also strengthens and controls your mind and this helps to maintain a good contact. So this is what samadhi is. Samadhi literally meant that you have to concentrate, you have to meditate, you have to have mental development through this. Then pragya. Pragya means it is the insight wisdom. The wisdom you are getting out of it, uh, pragya, it is enlightenment. This is the real heart of Buddhism. Pragya means you get some kind of mental insight. You, gain, you, you get uh, a wisdom. So this is pragya, and if you have pragya, ultimately pragya will lead to enlightenment. And wisdom will emerge if your mind is pure and calm. 
you have to be calm, you have to be uh, pure in your thinking, and these first two paths listed in the eightfold path. The eightfold path I discussed in my just just before, in which the first two parts are from the eightfold path described below. I am giving you with the description, and it refers to discernment. The last three belong to the concentration. The middle three are related to the virtue. So the eightfold path constitutes of different aspects of prajna. Mm -hmm. Then comes the four noble truths. What are the four noble truths? I have been telling it from the very beginning that Buddha realized that the four noble truths by seeing certain things. These were, as I said, dukkha, samudai, and dukkha is life is suffering. Suffering is real. It is almost universal. Everybody suffers. Anybody who comes to this earth suffers. Then suffering has many causes. You cannot have only one cause for your suffering. The suffering can be caused because of loss, because of sickness, because of the pain, because of failure of getting something, and it is everywhere, both in pleasure and in pain. The dukkha is almost everywhere. Then, as I said, is samudai is the cause of suffering. You have to find there is definitely a cause for the suffering. There cannot be no suffering, there can be no suffering without any cause. So there is a cause for this suffering, and suffering is due to the attachment. If I am attached to somebody, if something happens to that somebody, then I suffer. It is the desire to have and control things. If I desire for something, if I want this thing has to be mine, then if I don't get it, I suffer. So my desires controls my, my looking for something, or my desire controls my mind, my desires control my heart, so I get the suffering. If I don't get it, I suffer. It can take many forms. This, this desire takes many forms. It's a craving for sensual places. I may wish to have uh, some pleasure with some, some lady, some girl, or, or some person, the desire for getting famous, I want to be famous, so the, the desire is I will be one day very famous. Desire for fame, the desire to avoid unpleasant sensation. Sometimes I think that I must get everything, but it should not be any unpleasant things. And also, the fear, anger, and jealousy are the causes for dukkha. If I, if, I am, if I am scared, if I am angry with somebody, and if, if I am jealous to somebody, again I am going to suffer. Nirodho, as I, saw, as I said, there is an end to all the sufferings. You can bring an end, you can stop the sufferings. Attachment can be overcome. You can get away from any relationship, you don't have any attachment with anybody, and the suffering will be ceasing. There will be cessation of suffering with the final liberation of nirvana. You don't suffer anymore if you attain nirvana. If you attain nirvana, if you are going away from all the sufferings, that means there will be no suffering. The mind experiences complete freedom in nirvana. It gets liberation and non-attachment. You don't feel for anything. It lets go of any desire or any carving. If you are attaining the nirvana, you don't have any desire, you don't have any craving for becoming famous or becoming something bigger, so you don't have this kind of desire once you attain nirvana. Then magga. Magga is that in order to end the sufferings, whatever the sufferings I have, if I want to end it, we must follow the eightfold path, that is, I said you, the arja ostanga margo. There is a path for accomplishing all this. So how to go to the Eightfold Path? There is again a path to go there. Then, what are the five precepts? Buddhists all over the world, they accept these five precepts. There are the rules to live by. These are the rules. 
But however, these are recommendation, not commandments. It is not like the Ten Commandments written in the Bible, but it is the recommendation which are followed by every Buddhist. Do not kill. There is sometimes translated as not harming anybody or you can absolve violence. You don't resort to violence. So first one is don't kill, don't steal. It's a generally interpreted as including the avoidance of fraud and economic exploitations. Don't steal is not literally stealing anything from any shop. It can be implied, it can be interpreted that you have to avoid any fraudulent practices. You don't resort to any fraudulent practices and you should not be subject to any economic exploitation or you should not exploit somebody economically or financially. This all comes under your bracket, do not steal, do not lie, you should not tell lies. This is sometimes interpreted as including name calling or gossip. If you are calling names or if you are saying something to your friends, if you are saying something bad at somebody's back, if you are gossiping for that, that will sometimes mean uh, something wrong for the person about which you are gossiping, it also comes under lie. So don't lie, then don't misuse sex, don't misuse it. For the monks and nuns, this means any departure from complete celibacy, they should be completely away from sexual places. And for the laities, those for the lay followers, you can engage in sex, but adultery is forbidden. And along with any sexual harassment or exploitation, including within the marriage, even within the marriage, the woman is sexually exploited, even if he is married to somebody, but he is sexually exploited, that has to be stopped. Then accepting gold or silver, it is, it is strictly told in Buddhism that do not accept any luxury from anybody because that is contrary to Buddhist philosophy. You have to have something to eat for the day, but you need not to have something to save for the other day. So that is there in Buddhism. If you have any excess things, donate it. Give it to somebody who can live by that, but don't store it anyway. So these are the five precepts which are being followed by every lay followers of Buddhism, and this is the thing which is followed by the monks, the laities. So, this comes to the end of our discussion today and in subsequent lectures I will be telling you about the Buddhist values and the traits we will be discussing in my subsequent lectures.